Good afternoon, happy Halloween. Chef Roberto Cruz here at the Follow Your Bliss Test Kitchen. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to add detail to your pumpkin carvings this Halloween. Our subject today is Jack Skellington. One of my favorite characters for Halloween. I'm gonna start with showing our mise en place, which is chef's talk, or what you need to get started. So our buddy here is, uh, thank you very much, holding our pan and plastic wrap for aftercare. With that, we have our knives we'll be using for this. And this one is worth the whole cost of the kit itself. Puncturing your lines, I'll show you how to use that in a minute. We need our drawing, desired art piece, and some scissors. Along with that, dry towel and a wet towel. And let's get started. I'm going to show you how to do this in four phases. I'm going to start with the application of your desired piece. Start by making some relief cuts, which is a V-shaped cut. Help a flat piece of paper lay along with contours of the pumpkin or the melon, whatever you're carving. A couple, three, two, okay. Position it where you'd like it. It looks pretty good. Lay it across there. You can either wet the paper or you can lay the towel across the top of this. Same directions you would get in any over-the-counter Halloween carving kit. So we'll leave it here for about 30 seconds until it becomes moist and pliable, and then we're going to wrap it in plastic wrap to secure it in place. 29.30, let's see. All right, close enough. Okay, now we're back. We wrapped the outside in plastic wrap. We affixed our drawing to it, and we're just gonna mark where we where we put the outline. With the pen, it'll stick to the plastic as long as it's taut. For the general idea, you see we already did it back there, but just so you can see how it's done for yourself. Okay, with that done, we're gonna go on to this tool here. This is the one that comes with your standard carving kit. It's got a long straight edge and it's got a blunt edge. We're gonna use our straight edge go along the lines of our drawing here for all our detail. You're going to hold it in one hand, position some weight onto the melon so it doesn't move around, melon, pumpkin, whatever you're carving. Put it along the eye, one hand, one hand and tap with the other hand until it punctures for the entire pattern. Do that around the perimeter too. Same thing, hold it in place and tap it along your line. Through the magic of television. It's already done already. Don't like that. I'll take that. Thank you. You see what we're trying to do with the first stage is our blocking and our layout application of our initial drawing. We put down our pattern, our stencil, we traced it out with this tool here. To give us a line, you can see a little perforated puncture marks here from this. We're gonna follow those with the knife in a second. We'll do the same here. So now it's time to move on to phase two. Phase two, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start blocking out the inside areas. So we're going to get this here inside of his chest. I'm going to clean up his face a little, get it ready for some sculpting. We start, talk about knife safety and how to correctly hold the blade. When doing something like this, be very careful. These times are very sharp. You want to have complete control of what you're carving and what you're carving with at all times. I'm going to hold it about this far, about a finger like, uh, about one knuckle's worth away from your fingertip. So that it doesn't go all the way in. We're not making a jack lantern, we're doing a carving here, so we're not going all the way. I'm going to go in, just under the surface. You follow the same edge, turn your blade, remove it with the knife. Boom. Use the back of your knife to clean it. And your wet towel to wipe away any debris. Do the same space. Just give a quick example of what it looks like. Just peeling away the layer like we did on the rest of it. And preparing it to do some dimensional and depth carving. I'm on to phase three. Here is phase three. 
already cleaned everything up here and we're starting to round everything out. We've had some lines left over on the last part of this process, but we're taking them out here when we're getting our dimension. We're going to take the knife straight again, but we're going to go a little bit deeper. We had it here last time. We're going to go right about here. We're going to follow the contours of the line we want to make deeper. We're going to create some shadow here. Back the other way. And I'm guiding it with the opposite hand while putting pressure down on the pumpkin. Pop it out. It's immediately making a little line right underneath the shell to make it look like it's popping out of the pumpkin. Give you three effect. Use the back of your knife to clean it up. Like so. Or something like cat, as someone would say. And there you go, we've had some shale. Let me get the picture for you. You can see what we're doing here. We're trying to simulate what we have in the drawing here. So we have a shadow underneath his neck here, which we have to work on. And we have the shadow that we've replicated inside of his shirt. So looking pretty close so far. Let's work on his neck. So again, we're gonna make a deep incision right under here. And then again, an angle decision, incision to meet it. Some separation. There. That's pretty close. Okay, everything else is good. Let's get the bottom of this hand here to give you a little bit of shadow. We have some of the regular orange left over from the pumpkin's natural color. Just gonna shave a little bit off the end to make it look a little more round. I'm gonna let that orange that's left over become our shadow. So again, guiding with one hand, controlling the blade. With the right. There you go. Simple shadow just by taking away the edge right here. I'm going to move on to phase four, which is our detail finishing and cleanup work. That's all little details that are too fragile to leave laying around. So these are our last pieces. We're going to work on the pinstripes here, like you see, we've done. Most of them are ready for you. You have the notches here for his mouth. Trademark Jack Skellington. And we're going to finish up, to give you an example, we've applied the moon right here, right after we did our depth, and we're going to do his tie and the pinstripes on the suit to finish. So we're going to do this, one straight incision, 90 degrees to the surface, follow it all the way down, we're going to follow that line, turn it, if it's easier for you to see, I suggest you do this, and we're going to follow almost parallel to that line. it out with a knife. It's very hard to see sometimes, so especially when you're working with thin lines, but be patient with yourself. It's a process, enjoy the process. And take your time, it's no hurry. Let's do it again here. Straight incision. to remove the skin. There we go. Get out of there. Now it works. direction here. Sometimes you got to work with the bumps on the rind because they will change the direction of your blade. So just go with it. And do what you need to do. Okay. That's basically our finished product. Anything else you see our deeper dimensions here we can actually go in the mouth and clean it up a little bit more. Don't go too far but we are going a good length in there. Straight line. Cut the meter like the others. And get stuff out of Jack's mouth.
deep mode. Beautiful. There you go, one finished Jack Skellington. If you like anything like this for one of your events, or if you'd like to take one of our classes and want to learn how to do this yourself, go to our website, fybfoodandpastry.com. Call us or email us for more information. We're going to post more detailed information about the knives on Facebook later. Happy Halloween.